Today on the 403rd episode of The Grid, our special in-studio guest is fake British guy, high-end retoucher, and another person stealing American jobs, Victor Fesch. And Victor will be retouching images sent in by our viewers. Plus, we're giving away some cool, cool prizes, and it all starts in just 60 seconds. Grid is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to tamron-usa.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X, powered all the right places. Go to profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name is Scott Kelly, and I'm joined by two fabulous guys. First, you know Kuna, the Rocket Guy. Hey, hey guys. Kuna. Hey, Grid Nation. Hey, Grid something. <laughs> anyway, but we have a very special guest. You may recognize him from his role on television. No, you may recognize him from his classes here on Kelby One and from being a guest previously, I think twice now on The Grid. Oh, uh, yeah, I believe so. Twice on The Grid. Yep. A high-end retoucher. Now, he's fake. I call him a fake British guy because he, he lives in London. He has a British accent, but he's from Hungary, and he lives in Los Angeles, <laughs> oh where he is stealing American jobs that could be done by American retouchers like Eric. Yeah, yeah right. The wonderful Victor Fage. Welcome back, Victor. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'm, How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing really great. And now you live in America. I do. I do live in LA, so like that's quite dangerous. Well, that's a good place to live if you're going to be a retoucher. How do you like living in the U.S. so far? It's it's been good. I mean, the U.S. has been treating me quite well. I mean, it's just there are a couple of hiccups, a couple of hoops that I needed to jump through, but we are finally here, and um, I'm trying to make this work. It's not easy to come here legally, is it? No, it isn't. <laughs> it's very hard to come here legally, but if you know you want to sneak in, it's easy. Uh, that's what we did. Oh, that's, boy. How, that's how Eric and I got in. Yeah. That's nice. We're Canadian. Oh, we okay. came right across the border in a canoe. Is that not true, Eric? <laughs> not true. <laughs> what? That's, there you go. It's not true. Alternative facts. Anyway, we're glad to have you here either way. And so Victor has been very gracious enough to offer today to uh, retouch yeah. some of our viewers' files. So our, we sent out a call out yesterday and today to send in some of your own photos and that he would retouch them and, you know, kind of give you an idea of what, what you would retouch. I always think it's interesting to see what you will and won't retouch. Like, you'll look at a photo and you'll think it needs this or no, it doesn't need that. That's an art unto itself. And then it's showing incredible restraint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's really about knowing when to stop, to be honest, because you can retouch everything in a photograph you can just you know replace ears replace noses you can just create a new human being which is just wrong and i don't do that so definitely don't condone doing that but it's you know it can happen so you have to stop yourself from making that mistake of over retouching something i don't think that's an issue for you you're very very sensitive to that you know and mm -hmm. and this is why he retouches for some of the most famous brands some of the most famous photographers now i I used to send you stuff when you were in Hungary to retouch. Yeah, that's true. So, so you're retouching for people all over the world, but a lot of your clients were here in America. Yeah, that's correct. But you're not my client anymore because you told me earlier that I shouldn't move to the States because it's more exotic to be from Hungary and to live in Hungary. Mm -hmm. And I guess you're just angry. And because of that, you don't want to, because I'm not exotic enough for you, Scott. Not anymore. <laughs> you know, so now I just, I had to find someone more exotic. So now I send my... My uh, my retouching to Nepal. Okay, I'm just that's I'm fine. Totally making up. No, I haven't been sending. No, I mean, just kind of hurts. Just kind of hurt. No, but that's fine. I haven't. I have not been sending it out to anyone. Oh, we have to switch mics. Okay, I'm on a different mic. Just put that on. Just uh, is this like a back? Yeah, this is that's the backup. Just, okay, I have three mics now. Yes, three I have mics. this mic because we can't get mic. our mic situation fixed wow, yeah. ever. You have two ever. hands just to sound like stereo. Ever. Any was that was that your site, Victor? Uh, that was that was, yeah, yeah, the studio sites, which I don't really know. Well, I and a big, big reason why you're here is because you are teaching another class on Kelby One on retouching, right? How did you find out? I, <laughs> the that's words what they're on telling the me. Street. The world's on the street. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The office is You like have buzzing. pool here. Yeah. 
you know stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah he I'm, does. Yeah, he's all connected. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually doing uh, two two courses, right? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think you you've mostly done them now, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the first good. One. That's yeah, good. the first one. All right, still yeah. got one more to go. Yeah, we still have one more to go, but I'm I'm going to do that tomorrow. It's going to be a really exciting day. Like today, do you want to know what I? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. It's, yeah. a, it's about black and white conversion. Like, for example, you know, you're going to Photoshop, you grab like hue and saturation layer, and then you desaturate the image. And that's it. It's a really short course. That's I got a do. feeling there's more to it. Because <laughs> that will give you the flattest, ickiest black and white conversion known to man. Well, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I can't wait to see it. Yep. Um, couple things before we get launched in here because we, we've already got an, our first image ready to go here. Uh, I want to mention, uh, first, I want to shout out to all the people in Richmond and Dallas. I had such a killer time. I had the best groups of folks uh, in those two cities last week, and I was mm -hmm. very excited. Uh, I, I don't go any for, way for a couple of weeks, but in uh, November, I will be in, apparently, Seattle <laughs> <laughs> at Hotlanta. And by the way, and no one calls it Hotlanta. South San Francisco. And South, well, at the, I will be in San Francisco <laughs> at the South San Francisco Convention Center, our conference center. It's, it's Actually, I saw a comment up here, I think, about your, uh, your seminar is, hey, Scott, uh, enjoy the ultimate prior request for us in Richmond, Virginia. Thanks for teaching, Bill. Well, thank you for coming Monroe, out, Bill Monroe. That. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Oh, we had, we had such a great time. And then I also got to, and this was kind of cool, I got to shoot the, uh, the Navy's Blue Angels, you know, aerial acrobatic team. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was in my buddy. Uh, and you were with there with famous aviation photographer, right? I was there with a the famous aviation photographer. I was there uh, with Larry Grace. So Larry mm -hmm. is the president of ISAP, which is the International Society of Aviation Photographies. I bet you didn't even know there was one of those, did you? I knew that was like an ISAF. That's also like aviation stuff because that's like printed on the like pilot's bags. Mm -hmm. Right, but that, that's, that's, like a, that. I don't know. that's not this one. <laughs> totally separate. So I did, okay. a, I did a, a Spark page on it. If you go to my blog or go to my Facebook page, you'll find a link to it there. And uh, uh, that's, this is an old picture. So I'd only shot, no, keep going, keep going. Don't, don't yeah, go. Just go, go, go. So this picture was taken in 2015. I've only been able to shoot the Blue Angels on the runway. <laughs> so this was, this was my first time where they're up in the air. So I was pretty excited. And so it was a lot of fun. And, uh, they do, and what lens were you using to shoot that? I was using a 200 to 400 with a 1.4 tele extender. And how was that? It was very heavy and <laughs> awkward. It was the wrong lens to take. So it's not an iPhone shot? It is not an iPhone shot. Right. None of these are iPhone <laughs> shots. Yeah, that's 2X iPhone. Yeah, 2X iPhone. But uh, anyway, I had, had a wonderful... Those are actually iPhone shots right there if you want to see that. Oh, nice. And there's Larry Grace. There's that's Larry. Larry right there. And Larry is an awesome, awesome guy. Just... Just one of the most fun guys to hang out with, a great teacher. I sat mm -hmm. in on his blind critiques. Uh, well, they weren't, they weren't blind critiques, they were photo critiques. And he, he's, he is really good. I mean, he really helps the students, he guides them, and he really cares about them having a great experience. And we, had, we were right on the front. I mean, we were literally right on the runway. I mean, we, he, the yeah. access that Larry gets is just incredible. So you can thanks follow to, him right uh, over here on his Instagram. Yeah, his, it's Larry, Larry Grace, Grace photo. photo right there. You want to see some kick yeah, butt photos? Right over here. He gets all kinds of crazy stuff. There yep, he is, Larry there Grace photo. Yep. Oh, wow. And uh, Larry is just, just a tremendous guy, tremendous photographer. Yeah, it's great Go stuff. follow him. And he's I the follow editor. him. He's As the editor you can see, of iSnap. Following, yeah, right following there. right there. Yeah. There you go. All right, so anyway, if you get a chance, go check that out. And I hope to see some of you in Seattle or San Francisco or in Atlanta next month. Looks like I'll be traveling a lot again next month. Tomorrow, I will be in New York City at the Photo Plus Expo. I will be doing a book signing on Friday at the Rocky Nook booth. So keep an eye on, on my Facebook page, and I'll tell you what time it is and all that stuff. Like but three like three ish. something. But anyway, come by, hour. and I would love to sign your book. Uh, you can either pick up a book there or bring one from home. Uh, so that's on uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. And Eric the Kuna Man, Real Man, Rocket Man, Kuna Man will be there. Yeah. And are we going to do some live broadcasts is the plan? Yeah. So we're going to do some broadcasting and kind of give people a tour of the show. Yeah, hopefully see we see something cool. All right, let's get to Victor yeah. World. Oh, wow. Victor. Uh, hello. Hi. So, Victor, this is an image submitted by one of our esteemed viewers. Yeah, do you remember? I, I came to you because you asked me, what do I want to do on the grid? I was like, okay, maybe do something new. So, we are offering uh, this uh, first aid 
which is just kind of like showing like very quick tips on photographs that people sent in. So this is the first one you actually selected. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like a nice contender yeah, to choose uh, and start with this one, right? Let's do it. Okay, and apparently it's a raw photo. So yep. let me just be very quick. I usually, if I want to be quick, I just like to use the white balance tool here uh, just to click around if I have like a neutral background. But I actually, let's, let's just compare with the at shot. You see, that's quite cold. Yeah, a little bit cold. But now it's just, it's, it's more neutral. So I'm, I'm not even going to do anything about this because I know what I already want to show about this photo. Let me just close this one. Oh my God, this is like a sneak peek. You guys shouldn't have seen this. Don't see that. No. Don't look, don't look away. Look unsee away. that. Yes, exactly. So let's see how this works because I don't really have too much space here. Because it's like a very small studio and I don't know. They are not treating me too well, to be honest. Wow. <laughs> wow. So here is the thing. Right off the bat, I think you can see what I see is that hair, like middle of forehead. Chinese mm -hmm. spot. Okay, that's not what I want to say. But that's a, a good observation. But that's like a beautiful skin color here. I like this skin color, but this is just too red, especially mm -hmm. compared to this, yes, right? Yes, Definitely. Yes. Like this seems like a neutral, kind of like a very nice laid back skin tone uh, for this guy. Yes. And uh, we are going to just change that. So what I usually do, and this is just a quick tip, I get a freehand lasso tool just right here. And what I do, I need a good feather. Now we are going to see if like a hundred works for this. So let's just kind of, uh, uh, no, we are going to select it like that, okay? It's like a wobbly, not precise selection, but since our feather right. is just so big, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope it properly shows up at home. Now, what you can do is a couple of things, but let's say we go to curves and we are saying that, okay, this is kind of red and we want it to be less red. So what we can do is choose the red channel, choose this uh, hand icon, because I want it to see like what tones I want to select, so I just click here on the cheek, and that creates a point here. Right, right? where that mm -hmm. red yep. is. Right? Yeah, and I can just start like dragging that down and kind of taking out some of the red. So now if I just turn it on and off, you can see it's more red. It's re less red now. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then also what I notice is that if I do that, then the shadows get a bit like uh, cyanish. So what I can do is I kind of can uh, counteract that just by clicking here and just dragging it up in the shadows. So it's not like to uh, cyan in there and okay i did not see that did you see the cyan in the shadows yeah. i'm sorry you have a highly trained eye <laughs> ours are less less i saw the red when you of course you know i saw i saw that yeah, yeah. i did not see the cyan in the shadows no that's fine that's fine you need to you know look at photographs every day to be you know yeah. i, I be... don't look i try not to look at <laughs> photographs that's my goal <laughs> Uh, okay. That's many rockets have science in the shadows. No, seriously, mm. you have to train your eyes to <laughs> just look at the differences. What you look at probably is like nice composition, mm -hmm. nice tones, yeah, yeah. nice colors. But you don't really look at like, okay, what's the difference between these colors and what would be the value shift that would produce a positive effect in terms of skin tones and tonality of the whole image? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not even sure what any of that means. Okay, so cool. you're right, I don't. No, I just put together a couple of words just to sound smart. So, <laughs> I get where you're going. I oh, see yeah, where cool. you're going. No, I know what I you're saying. Where you're okay. Messing. I know. So sometimes what happens is that it becomes a bit colder because I took out all the red. So I can mm -hmm. just uh, shift to the blue channel and just try to see. I can even use like the hand tool again and just be like, okay, I need less blue. So just to be a bit more uh, like yellow. So now if I turn this on and off, it was before and it's after, right? Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Now, obviously, it needs more refinement and lights are shining in my face and I have a couple of excuses, but this can be more precise. I just wanted to show you like a quick tip what you can do with this photograph. So what I mm -hmm. would do is just to even out the skin color using big feathered lasso tool selections and the curves adjustment layer. All right. That's a big feather 100. Yeah. But it depends on the uh, resolution of the photograph. And yes, also, of course. also about of the uh, the size of selection you want to make. Yes. All right, we're off to a good start. Very so, good. So, uh, uh, Eric, we have some shout outs from oh, around yeah. the uh, a, place. Every, we got around the world. We got Todd saying hello from SoCal. Hey, Todd. We got Riverside Ronnie saying hi from Southern California. We got Warren saying hi from California. So we got a lot of California in the house. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we got Deb saying hi. We got Mike saying hi. We got two Mikes saying hi. One from the Mad City. Um, Madison, Wisconsin. 
Think so. cheese, it says. Mm -hmm. Think mm. cheese. Jeez. Then Jenny's saying hi from the Amsterdam, uh, Amsterdam, Netherlands. We got Mariana saying hi from the UK. We got Karen from Los Cabos. Los and Cabos. We've got Rich saying hi from Southeast Alaska. So Hugh from Ontario. We've got, whoa, from Poland. Uh, that is... Slamir? Slamir? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sounds good. Sure. That's my homeland. But I, I it should is be Eric, able to it's Eric's should homeland. be able to pronounce it, but I can't. There you go. They got Medi from Texas. We got Alec from Aberdeen. And then uh Bella from Budapest. It's actually pronounced Bela. It's Bela. Bela. It's Bela. Bela. Thank you, Eric. Yes, Bela. I knew that. <laughs> yes. And then uh Anne from Argentina saying hi. So we got all over the world. But I think after, we have to take a break now, though. Yeah, so coming up next, we're going to look at more of the pictures that have been submitted by our fine, fine viewers. Victor's going to take a look at them. And if you got any him. questions for him about retouching. Yeah, and yeah. if you have any questions about retouching or about Victor or how he got his immigration status, any of that please stuff. just Fair game. drop us a line. I'm here all day. <laughs> Is the tripod dead? Sure, a tripod works for basic shots, but who wants to be basic? You don't need basic, you need Blockbuster. And that's a job for a Platypod. The Platypod is your go anywhere, do anything flat tripod base. Its compact design helps you discover unique angles that you could never reach with a typical tripod. So, whether you're bringing up baby, driving Miss Daisy, or with your beasts of the southern wild, you can capture big budget footage and stills for a fraction of the time and money. So go ahead, shoot the next Rocky or Birdman. Or on the waterfront, the Platypod is equipped to grip uneven surfaces and hang from just about anything. When tripods go low, the Platypod goes lower. Its flat base reaches the lowest possible angle, resulting in truly inventive shots that can't be replicated with traditional equipment. And if you feel like adding a dramatic overhead angle, the Platypod has you covered. Just strap it or screw it in, and you're ready to go within minutes. The Platypod is constructed from aircraft-grade aluminum and titanium. Yeah, the stuff Air Force One is made of. So it's durable enough to travel with you from Chinatown to Casablanca and everywhere in between. If you only take the tripod, the story ends. You wake up the next morning with nothing but basic footage. Or you could take the Platypod to a museum, or on an elevator, or strap it to a tree, or hang it on a bench at church or put it on the ground and get incredible blockbuster footage. Who are we kidding? You should totally take the Platypod. The tripod is not dead, but it needs a sidekick. The Platypod. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by B&H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, yeah. we are back, everybody. Scott Kelby here with Victor Fash, our special guest, Eric the Rocket Man Kuna. Mm -hmm. And we are glad to have you guys here. Thanks for everybody who's tuning in from all over. We are looking at images that our reader, our viewers, not our yeah. readers, our viewers have sent in. We and could read we're, stuff, too. We could read. Yeah. And we're going to send it over here to Victor to see where we're at on our next image. Here we go. All right, so we have this next image that I selected and you sent over because you're just the best guy ever. And um, I mean, sending <laughs> he, over stuff he's is... full of it today. No, <laughs> sending over stuff is really nice. Aren't you happy when you get like a package and stuff? 
It's like the yes. happiest, like it's surprise and Christmas and yes, all that. Christmas. So this is almost like a mini Christmas on the set of the grid. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes. So and he opened it up and he said, <laughs> "Wow." All right. So let me show you something that most people would not dare to do. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to open this image. This is a raw image, but I'm not going to care about that. I'm just opening it up. I'm just. Uh, like, I wouldn't dare to do that. Yeah, I'm just a savage, Scott. Um, so what I do, uh, because there is like something that we want to remove here. Like there is like an umbrella or mm -hmm. like a softbox, octobox, whatever. Right. And we also have like maybe the ceiling or the back wall that's, you know, shining through uh, from behind the uh, seamless backdrop. And I want to take care of that. Now, yes. how do you do that if you want to be like uh, very easygoing? You create a new layer. You grab like uh, a brush because that's just, you know, how we roll here. You need it to be like really big. And then the hardness is 0%. And then you put the opacity onto about um, something like 26. And what you do is you start um, simply sampling colors around here. And what you do is you just start painting. Uh, now, let's tell for the viewers at home who are not Photoshop wizards. Uh, he is uh, basically switching to the eyedropper tool by holding the option key. And it lets you, because he's got the paintbrush, not the clone stamp tool. So every time you see the little circle show up, that's him grabbing whatever color is already in the picture. And then he's painting with that, with a big circle. Exactly. And the reason I'm doing that, and I'm, I'm, I have my opacity on 30%, is because I'm trying to blend tones and colors together so that they will look seamless and will not really show up. Now, since once again, I have the excuse that lights are shining in my face, and this is a dark image. I'm not sure when I'm done, so I'm um, just very soon, just not waste time. I'm going to say that it's almost done. Okay. Uh, because like everything is removed, at least it looks to me on this shiny screen. And what you need to do is like, hopefully it does not overlap with your subject. And you can just check if you do before and after, and you can see that it kind of overlaps the hair. Because you see the highlights going a bit like yeah. dull. Mm -hmm. yep. You can see yeah. that, right? So very simply, you put a mask, you uh, grab the same brush, just maybe a bit smaller, but same like uh, as in 0% hardness, but the opacity, you need to increase to 100. And with a black foreground, you just kind of erase that from where you don't need that. And since we use like such a low opacity, right. it's basically invisible to if, if we just do this. So after that, all you do is you zoom in. And uh, once again, this is like a really dark photograph, so I'm not going to really zoom in just because that's, that would be just quite boring. But what you do theoretically is you go back to the actual layer, not the layer mask. Right. You go up to filter, you go into noise, noise, add noise, and you try to match the noise level of your newly created plate or replacement right. mm -hmm. with the, uh, the actual noise that's in the photograph. Now, yeah, I don't think people realize if you just go and sample the black background color and paint, it's going to look artificial and digital. Yes. You need some little bit of noise in there, some bit of texture, so it really looks like it's part of the image, not mm -hmm. solid black painted on top. That's correct. And, and it's because we use the method of 30% uh, opacity and just painting over and over again, we are kind of creating artificial um, like variants, if that makes right. sense. Right. It's not 100% black. Yeah. Yeah. Usually the amount actually would be like on, on very high quality photographs. It's like 1%, 2%. And um, I usually put it on uniform. It's because it's like more, uniform is more digital. And usually you deal with digital photographs. You don't want to put like a uh, fake grain, you want noise. So I, I put it on uniform, sometimes uh, not monochromatic, but mostly monochromatic. And I just hit okay. And that's it. I mean, it's really simple. It's really easy, but most people are like too afraid to use the brush tool. They always want to use clone stamp. They always want to heal. Right. They always want content to wear. You don't always need that. Sometimes it's just this simple and that's it. Lovely. What else would you do to this photo besides fixing, getting rid of the softbox on that? Uh, well, it kind of depends, but sometimes you need to open up the photograph because kind of we are, uh, this is why it's, it's not a good advice or not really advice to shoot on really dark backgrounds and not really light your subject because then you don't really get separation. So it's almost like she's falling into the abyss. Yes because it's dark and mm -hmm. this side is dark, so we have no counterbalance here. So what I would do, just to reflect back on the previous uh, thing we did, is I would get like a lesser tool again, a freehand lesser tool with big feather, um, and I would just try to open up uh, the right side, for example, especially of the face. 
Now I do that by creating a selection and then creating curves adjustment layer, which applies the selection onto the mask, right? Mm -hmm. And then simply in the RGB section, I can just elevate simply the mid tones. I don't even really have to do anything else. So I don't have to do something fancy like, okay, I'm going to do this, that. Right, some crazy curve. Yeah, just slightly the mid tones. Now, obviously, the reason I can use mid tones is I can't really stretch it. So if I did this, Obviously, it's right. like mm -hmm. bright, but I, I shouldn't do that because it looks bad. Mm -hmm. So the only, like this is the max I can take it. And for that, mid-tones are great. So if you look at the before and after, like this is the before and after. Like there is such a difference even with like a non-precise, non-time-consuming method. What do you think? I think I am 100% agreement. Okay, perfect. Very nice. Nice. Well, you know, along this line, so Rose is asking, and this, I think, is going to be a light room. Oh, by the way, we, we love thing. Rose. Now, yep. Rose is from New Zealand. Yep. Okay. She gets up early in the morning. They yep. have 13 hours or some crazy thing behind us. <laughs> so Rose so. is asking, uh, I'm keen to know how to reduce the color in some photos. So I think that goes back to kind of that first photo that you were touching where you're kind of messing with certain colors. But it seems, uh, seems it's not so easy in Lightroom. Yeah, usually if you want to have more control, you take the photo and, and you put it in uh, Photoshop, you load it in and, and use it there. Now, what do you think, like what would like reducing colors would mean in this instance? Like, I think, I, she's, I, I don't know if she's talking about maybe there's a color blooming, like the reds. Yeah. Like for example, like Nikons bloom in the reds. Yeah. If yes. you shoot a red robin, it, the reds, and when you try to reduce them, they just turn pink. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah. that could be one thing, or it could be an overall vibrance to the photos. They're like you, maybe she wants to desaturate it. Maybe uh, Christina, yeah, you could you ask could, like, and ask Rose if, confirm to it. confirm: Is she looking how to desaturate a photo, or is there a particular color that's blooming, or something like that? We can do that. Now, you know what? Let me add something interesting. Oh, okay. Um, so you mentioned like uh, Red Robin, and that you, if you reduce it, it goes to pink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it's like really too bright. Yes. And you can't really do anything. Uh, sometimes it's about the context. So sometimes you actually have to increase uh, the other colors so that it kind of matches the saturation of the one that you want to desaturate. So you're bringing up the cyan and you're bringing up other yeah, colors, other colors. Too. Yeah, just to help to, you know, to have achieve the balance. Uh, yeah, I do that a lot. Actually, I do that a lot with the, yeah. uh, in the two saturation luminance. I'll kind of mix those things together to kind of counteract so it's almost like you're treating you're accentuating other colors in order to treat yeah the color so that you're wanting of, to instead re of desaturating reduce, the red you're yeah. boosting the other colors up to exactly. the red exactly here is a, a really simple example so like studio photographs let's say it's it's usually like a lighter blue background right and then you have against that the subject usually a human being uh with orangish uh, brownish skin tones now those are uh, obviously complementary colors and because of that you have like a very vivid color contrast and then you really have to balance the uh, the vibrance and saturation of the background uh, in relation to the skin tone because otherwise one of them is going to look out of place and look too saturated or too desaturated so just try that I mean at home you guys can try that open up a photo that's like quite neutral and try to increase or decrease uh, colors that you would not think of because that might actually counterbalance your photographs. Yeah, great stuff. All right, uh, well, you have another picture. Do you have another photo you want to look at? Oh, I definitely do. Um, and also, hey, here's another tip. Just uh, just throwing it out there because, you know, I'm generous today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and modest. Exactly. So <laughs> what you should try uh, is to experiment because we think we know Photoshop, right? We don't. No. We no. don't because there are so, so many... Deep. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's because there are so much uh, things to do. Like you can mix things that you wouldn't think of mixing. Like for example, the black and white filter. It's obviously, it's not only for black and white, right? It's, it can be used with blending modes. So let's say you go to luminosity blending mode, and then these sliders turn into uh, luminosity. Like I can just turn the luminosity of the reds down or up, right? Or the yellows, which is mostly skin tone. So I can create like a very bright skin tone and stuff like that. For example, the, the dress, which is like green cyanish. So let's see which one actually. Yeah, you see, kind of I can just fine tune that without actually like using masks. Mm -hmm. right. I don't have to go into like hue and saturation and so forth. 
But not just luminosity, I can even put it on saturation because that's like that deals with black and white and that gives you the proper black and white, uh, which is also, uh, you know, that's what you need. So, but here's the thing. You can also do this on multiply and all these other, all, all these other options are going to give you even more options. And then you can just basically experiment with your photograph by that point and just, you know, go crazy. Obviously, this is not the aim here. No, that looks good. That looks good. But I just wanted to show you, like, you can, like, many no, ways. No, it's definitely, I mean, that's the, that's the, the beauty of Photoshop. Exactly. But I think that's also what, what a lot of people, why they get scared of Photoshop and why Lightroom, I think, is for photographers. It's one of those things where I could do a lot. But if you do want to get in and really start fine-tuning and adjusting, yeah. that's where Photoshop is, that program that it's kind of like, one, there's 30 ways to do the same thing. And yeah. then, two, it's just so deep. Like you yeah. can go so deep with it. So, you know, it's interesting in Lightroom Magazine, uh, just last night, I think maybe, maybe this mm -hmm. morning, I forget. Yeah. No, it was last night. Last night I was writing, uh, I, write, I write a note from Scott because I'm an editor, so I have a note from me at the beginning. And you know what my, my whole note was about? Was about uh, it was a conversation I had with a guy in Dallas at uh, my seminar. Basically, his thing was, should I learn Photoshop? Like, is it worth learning? I'm already paying for it. You know, I got the $10 a month thing, which I asked the crowd, how many people have the $10 a month thing? It's like everybody, right? So um, he says, you know, I have it. I don't know if I really need it. I think Lightroom pretty much does what I want to do. And I said to him, I said, look, I love Lightroom. I spend 85% of my time in Lightroom. But Lightroom really does is a tonal adjustment tool. Mm -hmm. it, it, sorts, yeah. it sorts your images, and then it makes things brighter or darker. You can enhance detail. You can change your white balance, but it's a very tonal tool. Photoshop is where the magic is. It's the magic. That's, I was Photoshop yeah. is where is. you do the things that are really, really fun. It's not fun making your photo darker or brighter, changing the white balance. It's kind of getting I the mean, start. It's, it's like the yeah, start to a good photo. But when you want to do really cool things, and in my seminar, I actually wind up using a lot more Photoshop than I do Lightroom. In fact, I almost use Lightroom as a host to take images yep. over to, so, but anyway, and, and, and so that's what my thing was. You probably already have Photoshop. You're probably already paying for it. And I told him, I have a class called, um, Basically, it's Photoshop for Lightroom Classic yeah. users. Yeah, that's and I said, and I'm writing, of course, the magazine is only for Kelby One members. So I'm writing to Kelby One members. I'm talking to them. And I'm like, look, I'm not trying to sell you on anything. If you, you're, you've already paid for the <laughs> yeah. class just like you paid for Photoshop. It's a two-hour class. You can watch little, their little five-minute and six-minute segments. Go watch it, and you'll be learning. You'll be using Photoshop. And you're going to realize that's where the magic is. And I... And, and there's so many things that you can do in Photoshop that you just simply cannot do uh, in, in Lightroom. And, and people aren't buying all these plugins out there because they, they need to expand Photoshop's power. Most of them are buying them for Lightroom yeah. uh, because they're trying to do things that you can't do in Lightroom. They have to have Photoshop Yeah, but Photoshop for. is where the magic is. Yeah. Hey, coming up next, Victor's got another image we're going to go through, and uh, we've got a couple of comments. And look at that, we got a great comment already there, and we'll read it when we get back, because that camera's in front of it, and I can't yeah. see what it says. And it's moving. But that's happening, and, and it, it starts moves, moving, and it moves. <laughs> it's done. You know who's on the camera? It's not Juan. And that's what? why it's not so smooth. I'm leaving. Oh, Yeah, I'm leaving. Snap. I'm leaving. Oh, snap. He <laughs> oh, didn't say that, snap. did he? And look, he doesn't go as high as Juan. He's, <laughs> he'll get better. He'll get better. He might, might. Hi there, Kelby One members. Corey Barker here once again with Master FX Training. And this time around, I've got another fun 3D project. And we're going to be getting a little bit more in-depth with 3D this time around. Not more advanced, just a little bit more in-depth. We're going to be creating 2D elements in Photoshop, converting them to 3D, and then bringing those elements into Dimension to create the final scene. Now, I know it sounds like it's complex. It is not. If anything, it is actually a lot of fun. So I hope you'll join me in checking out my newest projects here at KelbyOne.com.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. We are back. It's Scott. It's Victor. It's that other guy. And we're... <laughs> yeah, now you're that other guy. You used to be the rocket Other man. guy. Now you're the other guy. All right. So uh, we got a comment back from Rose on what she was trying mm -hmm. to do. So Rose says, I was trying to increase the color in my red flower using Lightroom. However, it seemed once that I'd used all of the sliders in the HSL, which is the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders in Lightroom, that it did not work as well as Photoshop. Also, adjusting the greens is difficult in Lightroom's highlights, shadows, and luminosity. I will start using Victor's method in Photoshop and see how I get on. Oh, a convert. A convert. Well done. There you go. All right. Well, you know what it is, Rose? There are so many more tools in Photoshop to do that. I mean, there are many, many other tools besides and, just and the, Lumina the HSL can, sliders. You can stack them. And that's the thing is with the layers, you can keep yeah. on adding and adding effects where where you can do some of that with Lightroom with like adding adjustment brushes, but you can go really, really far with Photoshop. Yeah. You can almost go to the nth degree. Yeah, yeah. and photo is, Photoshop is more of a precision tool yep. too sometimes. you. Yeah, uh, it's a good way to do that. But also if you keep like stacking it, like, you know, at one point your color space oh, will not allow you to Yeah, I mean, at some point further. it's just too much. But here's yeah. the thing. Uh, once again, if you want to, you know, have something appear uh, brighter or like, more um what is that the vib vibrance whatever you want something to be uh, really red then you need to make something else really uh blue really green so that can stand out actually and it really helps if like for example if it's about a flower what you can do is you can push some green or blue into the shadows of the flower the petals the the shadow side of it because that's just going to accentuate it and make it a bit more vibrant you really understand color at a crazy level. Hopefully. Hey, uh, there's a great quote here from Ben I just saw. Ben says, and this is from Ben, this is, this is unsolicited testimony. He says, if you haven't already, go watch Victor's retouching class. I watched it over a year ago and made a PSD file using his PS, or he made a PSDT PT. file using his PSD file system that I still use for retouching to this day. And he gave you the thumbs up emoji. Thank you, Ben. Mm -hmm. Say hi to Brigitte for us. It's his wife. They're a lovely couple. Oh, they are okay. really from London. The you really know They're everyone really here. They're really from London. They're not like fake London. No, they, you really know everyone here, right? Yeah, we've we got mm -hmm. a lot of friends. Yeah, definitely. We're friends. Family. It's really nice, actually. So I think we got another image to. Uh, but this is not retouch. the class that he's talking about. No, no. no it's, a diff it's a different class. Victor has many classes with us. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's going on? You're going to retouch. Got, we got That's what image. I'm trying to do. There we go. Yeah. We need to show yeah, his we screen. Got his too concerned there with we my go. image. <laughs> oh my God. Can we fire them? Uh, no. And there's yeah. Victor's Instagram. And that's still. We're no. just all over the okay. place. <laughs> hey, just pull up any random screen you got. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever you got's fine. Okay, so you, you guys remember how, how we talked about like saturational balance? Yeah. So let mm -hmm. me just show this quickly because this photo is really good for that. So let me just create a hue and saturation layer. And once again, using like this hand tool, I'm just going to determine that this is probably cyans, right? So what I want to do is I can increase the cyans, usually that's like around here. And then I can in the shadows just decrease the saturation of the face and uh, maybe a bit of the uh, yellows as well, just to make it better. And as you can see, just look at the before and after. This is the before, and this is the after. Oh yes, very nice. Yep. So you get this balance. You still have like, uh, it's a bit still oversaturated and the colors are not right. You right. still need to work a bit on this, but this balance really, really helps. Right? Oh, tremendously, yes. Yeah, perfect. Okay. so. Like, let me just show you another tip on this photograph. I'll just open this up if I can. Sometimes just Photoshop on the Mac is just horrible. Never use Photoshop on Mac. Always use PCs. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> that was my plug of the day. Um, you're, you're using a Mac there, bro. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, but I'm getting paid by PC people. I know. 
Open the image because I don't care about the conversion now. <laughs> so what I wanted to show, like there are some. This is marks. the last time I'm taking you drinking right before we go in the air. <laughs> I mean, good like, very good idea, Scott. All right. So we have some uh, stretch marks, and if we wanted to uh, get rid of them, uh, here is how we would do that. So the non-destructive method, which is still destructive, because non-destructive is something that when you create a layer and if you work under it, you can influence the outcome. But if I create a layer and start just using the, uh, for example, the healing brush, like let me, let me just uh, do this, sample this. So I just use the healing brush. Let me just catch, catch up. Let me just like, what is this thing? Maxar. Okay, thank you. You see, MacBooks. So if I do that, for example, like under this, let me just grab a brush tool. If I do anything, you can see that it shows up. So it's still like a destructive method. Right? What, I, what did you do? I'm, I'm sorry. I... <laughs> Let me start from the beginning. Yeah, okay? start from the beginning. I'm lost. So I created a new layer mm -hmm. and right. I healed like that part of the stretch mark. Okay? Yes. So many people call this, this is just an explanation. Many people call this method of healing non-destructive. Right. But if you, if you paint under it, we just, I just painted under it with a black brush. I didn't do anything. Oh, see, okay. Mm -hmm. It still doesn't show through, so it's still destructive. That's just, that's just, you know, a fact. I just wanted to correct some people. That's it. In your face, people. But <laughs> <laughs> the, real tip, the real tip here is about the following. Whenever you want to heal something, and let me just uh, close the distance here, you get the healing brush tool, and I always use my healing brush tool, here are my settings, on hardness 100%. You know how if you get close to edges with the healing right. brush tool, it kind of smudges there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like all the edges are look just terrible. Now, if you put this up to 100%, that's less likely to happen. Obviously, you still shouldn't get too close to edges, but it kind of minimizes that yeah, effect. Yeah, I think mine's at 100%. I'm going to go look, see what mine's at. That's, that's a brush tool. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> Yeah, hardness of 100. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. I just checked mine because no, I'm very thinking good. It's, freaking, it's freaking me out. No, no, no. It's really good. So All now right. if I just paint with this, even though the, is, uh, the hardness is 100%, you still can't really see anything around it, right? Mm -hmm. So right. that's basically how you would repair these blemishes if you wanted to. So it's a healing brush thing. Exactly. But 100% uh, hardness. 100% hardness. Yeah. Very I'm hard. with you. Very hard. I'm with you, yes. <laughs> 100% is very hard. <laughs> hey, there's some Jets, woo. Jets, suffragettes, Jets. All right, let me hit cancel here. <laughs> yep, there's Sorry. Blue Angels. All right, so uh, Mariana questions. says she would love, love to find out more about retouching old photos, even colorizing. So Mariana, we uh, have a couple of articles that you should check out in Photoshop User Magazine from Deb, who is one of our uh, community, uh, Members. Members. No, but there's a yeah. better name. She's a super member. Yeah. <laughs> she's a mega member. Yeah, mega member. But uh, she's really good at this. She's mm -hmm. doing this yeah. like for governments and for libraries and different stuff. She's really, she's done a couple of, of <clears throat> excuse me, feature articles in Photoshop User Magazine. Go check them out. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you're a member. Yep. And go to the Kelby One Mags app. You have access to all the back issues for years. And uh, you'll and, and look for re uh, restoration is the word you're looking for. Look for restoration, and you will find that that it's a different genre of retouching, but it is a really interesting one. And Deb is very good at colorization. That's like one of her yep. things. She's she's spot money on it. So yep. Mark has a question for you, Victor. Uh, nice. He's asking, when working with large files, do you have some quick tips for managing Photoshop memory, like number of history states you use, et cetera? Do you, have, do, you do anything with that? Well, at home, uh, I have uh, 64 gigs of RAM. That's, that's a good... Like, PC? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you'd need it on a PC. Good, good machine. <laughs> um, you only need 16 oh, on a Mac, by the way. Go ahead and spend oh, that extra money. It's no, fine. This, you got plenty. This one has 16, and it's just you know, struggling sometimes. That's because you're using a Mac from like the 1940s. <laughs> I have to give you that. Hey, Stop. I got a killer tip for this, though. I really do. Yeah, Mark, okay. I got a killer tip for you. Yeah, yeah. Mark, seriously, this is a killer tip. I kid you not. So take a look at my screen. Okay. Let's say that this was, a, this was a very, very large file. 
This is not. It's, it's, a, it's a 30 megapixel. But let's say that it was a 100 megapixel Hasselblad file. Here's what you can do. Take a selection, copy it and paste it into a new document. Just work on that area. It will haul butt, Mark. You will, with a small file like that, and when you're done, you can paste it back into the exact same spot. And the way to do that, I'll just show you, is select all and copy. And when you go back to your original image, what you're going to do, even if it's not selected, is because if you hit paste, it's going to show up in the middle. What you're going to do is choose paste in place, and it will put it exactly, well, I cut it from there, sadly. <laughs> you have to do it before I, I hit that. But from yes. wherever you copied it from, it'll paste into the exact same spot where it was. Can we actually try something? Yeah. That could be part of the, the tip. So if you just paste it in and we select both of the photos, hopefully we have enough, or maybe not, just to do like an auto line. Yeah, you could do that. It might fail though. So. You're setting me up for another trick. No, that that oh. worked pretty well too, but I got another, I got a third trick. We're oh, wow, just okay. oh, yeah, trick we're going, city, we're ready? Deep. Ready, no, check this out. Photoshop. So if you want to do it manual, check this out. Go over here to difference mode and watch. It, it, it won't line up, but when you get close, use your arrow keys, and when it is exactly perfectly in line, it will turn solid black. Okay. Boom. What? Boom. Boom. Let me, let me go. Then Photoshop. turn to mod normal, <laughs> drop the mic, boom. Let me go one step further. Uh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a nice. That's let a, me go one step further. <laughs> oh, he knows a better one. <laughs> no, that's a nice flashy trick, but unfortunately, it wouldn't work on like really, really high resolution files. Because uh, like the difference there would be, and if you like retouch that part, like that, you would have differences. So it wouldn't turn like completely black. So what well, you would do. Part of it. You only need part, part of it to of turn it. black. Yeah, but what you would do basically is that if you just have it on normal and you keep turning it on and off again, yeah. it would show up. Like, let's see, like it's a bit like here, okay? Right. You, let's say you can't see the difference. Right. But if you just do this, you can yes. immediately, even if it's just one pixel. Right, you'll see the like, difference. You'll you will see, see the difference and, it's, and you don't even need to do anything. Like I just put it up and now let's see. Yeah, we still see the difference, right? So we need to go this way and one more. And I think we're back, right? It's true. Thanks. Yep. That's the layman's way of doing it. You want to use difference <laughs> mode so you'll impress your friends. That's true, yeah. though. I mean, all right. Nina. So, did you have another tip on the performance there? Uh, not really. I mean, no. unfortunately, I'm more like a uh, retouching artist, and I, I yeah. know less about the computers. You just say a lot of memory. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And you also need a lot of um, what is that? A scratch disk space? Mm -hmm. Because if you run out, you can't even save your file. Yeah. And it's not because you don't have, this. let's say you have like a, a different disk that you would like save that file to, but if like your scratch disk, it's already full, you would not be able to save the file. I've got a trick for that. Okay. Ready? Yep. So the scenario is you've run out of space on your hard drive. You go to save and it says, cannot save file, scratch disks are full. Ready? Check this out. Is it switched to a PC? No. Oh, okay. Everything should be switched to a Mac. <laughs> go under the edit menu to purge right here and you can get rid of your clipboard your histories or anything that is stuck in memory hit mm -hmm. purge all and you'll be able to save your file boom that's a really nice trick but what boom. if you really want to retain those things well you can't you're about to lose your file this is an emergency situation okay that's like i'm about I mean, to lose oh yeah, this my is like last resort that's just important to yeah, yeah emphasize that it's last result you well, number do one, that. you could just get rid of the clipboard. That's not a big deal. Yeah, but the clipboard is like, eh. Depends on whether you have, you know, something important in the clipboard. What if you're storing something from a different image or for, from an hour that's ago? That's true. That's still hanging out in your clipboard. You don't need it. So well, let me just summarize just so that it's not confusing. So your purge method is perfect if you can get rid of the history, the clipboard, and everything else. Yes. That's the perfect method. That's, that's really true. Just be aware that you can, through this, lose some stuff that you might not want to lose. Okay, can I give you another one then? Yeah. The other one is this. Go into your image with a very small rectangle tool and select a small little tiny area and just go copy, copy, copy three times. And that will basically, whatever big thing that was hanging out in your 
thing, it'll be just down to that one little spot. That's perfect. And that's another way, well, you, you, you did lose what was in the clipboard. Yeah, that's fine. The clipboard is not but, that important. Right, but that's, yep. do it, it, it takes three times, I believe, is the magic number. And I did not plan on having this, these yes, cool of yes. tips today. So thank you to Mark to uncorking that genie, taking that genie out of the bottle. Very good. Or, or we just or, manage our file systems and make sure we have yeah, space. Yeah, or we just have more space. Mm -hmm. Or. That's an option. Or. That's an option. You know, I think what we should do is look at some other images in just a moment. When we come back, we're going to look at some more images, probably. And. Um, oh, there it started. Oh, once started the gym moving. starts, it's done. There yeah, it goes. It. So we're, stick we're around. We'll be back. Right Victor's still here, and he's in quite a mood, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> he's quite zippy. Sassy. Hey, Kelby One members, join me for my new class, Post Processing Milky Way Photography. I think when it comes to post processing, this is really what differentiates good and bad Milky Way photography. There's a lot of things that we can't do if we just expose for one shot, that we might want to expose for multiple shots and bring out that color in the Milky Way and the depth and the dimension. We've gone out and shot the Milky Way. Now we're going to take it into post processing really make those photos pop. And we're gonna go all the way from why it's important to nail that white balance in post, all the way through to building up our exposure settings, our contrast settings, our colors, and then making that Milky Way come alive. And then we're gonna go through noise reduction techniques. We're gonna even go into stacking. And as well, we're gonna go into blending. The post-processing in Milky Way photography is really the great equalizer. It's the thing that you can go and you can take a shot from just a shot to something that's wow. So come join me at my new class on kelby1.com. Well, I started out as a photographer, but then I realized I, I liked, you know, retouching more. Being able to influence the end result, and the visual aspect of it, and the end result that wow, that's, that image looks good. And with this class, it's giving them that mindset to know what I needed to do. It would serve as a toolbox or a guidebook in order to, to achieve this certain outcome to create visually pleasing images. It's not about technique. It's, it's really about thought process. Everything is skin. If you treat your clothing on a, on a photograph or grass or whatever, just like skin, you can use the same techniques and you can achieve amazing results. My name is Victor Fayesh and check out my latest class at calbyone.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, I just want to mention while we have this special time together, I started a new series on LightroomKillerTips.com, which is where I share a lot of my Lightroom tips. I started a new yeah, series. It runs every here. Tuesday. It's called Lightroom Boom. in 60 Seconds. And it is a very short, just quick little tip every Tuesday. And there it is. There's my snappy little logo. And uh, anyway, if you'd like mm -hmm. to go by and check them out, there. The, so this was the third Tuesday. Yesterday was the third Tuesday. But if you head over to LightroomKillerTips.com, myself and Rob Sylvan post there uh, four or five days a week with Lightroom stuff. So if you're into Lightroom and you're not from Hungary, so stop by and check it out. There you go. There you go. What was that discrimination? You nothing, know, uh, nothing. Nina had a great comment here. She's saying, so much inf info to take in. We'll have to rewatch this grid episode. Yay. So, yeah, definitely. Very good. See? It's yeah. speaking of info are? to take in. I think we have one more image, right? What do you got there, bro? Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Um, so hopefully this will be quite visible. If not, then please do and try this on your own image. So what you see here is what, like we have a couple of like dust spots, like some... Yeah, yeah little specs. little specs. They're yeah. hard. They're small. Let me just zoom in so that we can like. Yes, there's a spec. There we go. That's, That's a, spec. a spec. That's a spec. Okay, so 
and you want to get rid of that. Now here we only have like a few because we have that some. That looks like, pretty bad when you're like really. Yeah. I mean, spec, spec, we have some spec. here. No, That's no. Let me show you. What? Is, what are you? Let me just use this for a second. Yeah, sure. If you if you go right here, hold on. Oh my gosh, I'm having a hard time moving this thing around on somebody else's machine. Oh, and, oh it's because I have the wrong tool. I'm yeah. sorry. I can't move it. Forget it. Yeah. Let's move fine. on. That's fine. So anyways. Oh, I needed the grabber hand. Yeah, that was like, okay, forget it. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. What is that? These are, uh, what's going on, guys? <laughs> now I don't know. I can't tell you to worry off the air because I can't say it on the air. Oh, okay. So uh, here's so the specs thing. on there. We're going to read yeah, There's specs, is there? <laughs> okay. Still specs. The thing is, you can go in and use the healing brush tool and just, you know, get rid of all of those. You see this, right? It's not just me. Okay, thanks. What's going on? <laughs> do you really not see it? I don't know why she does. Okay, yeah, maybe. Nice. No, that's not, that's not quite it. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so, guys. <laughs> it looks like a butt crack. I'm sorry. Just... It either looks like a butt crack or something else. It's just all bad. All right, you know but what? there's specs there. Are there specs? <laughs> okay. Specs. So here's I'm sorry. I'm, mentally, I'm still like a fifth grader. Let's, let's be serious here. I'm sorry, Victor. Serious I know action. you're from a foreign country. And Robert James <laughs> says, oh, I plan to watch this several times. <laughs> okay, this one? I mean, yeah. I don't think that this... Is there specs? Did I see specs? <laughs> <laughs> there's specs. So how are we going to remove those specs? I don't know if they can be removed. <laughs> Not anymore. I mean, are we just... Is it like... Time's up? Something? No, no, go, no. go. Oh. Gosh, Don't bummer. let that go. That clock has never affected us bummer. before. Okay, so what we have here is like you can go in the heat <laughs> tool and just go around and remove everything by hand. And that's manual work, almost like manual labor, and you wouldn't want to do that, right? No, no, no. 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 You, they don't pay you enough to do that. So no what you does. do, yeah, like what you do basically is you want to uh, duplicate. I just did like a command or mm -hmm. control plus J, which is right. a fun, so fancy way of saying like duplicate. Duplicate the background in layer. In Photoshop language. And what you do is go up to filter and you go into uh, noise and there is something, uh, dust and scratches, right? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously these are specs and not um, like scratches. Right. But we still have some sort of dust and everything. So what you want to do, this is how you dial it in. And I encourage everyone to try this at home. So you pull down on the threshold, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. And then you start messing around with the radius until, like it could be even one, no, we actually need two, yeah. Until all those dust, scratches, specks mm. disappear. Yep. And then you can start uh, grabbing the threshold and just increasing it so you can get back all the detail that was there without the uh, dust, scratches, or specks. And so the detail comes back, but the, but the the specs are gone. Exactly. So then I hit OK. And let me just go back to the zoomed in area where we had like specs before. So let me just go before and after. You see, oh. we didn't like heal it. We didn't clone right. stamp it. And it's, it's not there anymore. But the surrounding area, you can see from the uh, pixels, it's uh, intact. Mm -hmm. Right? That yeah. is a good tip. Boom. Boom. Drops the mic. There we go. Now, as I said, it's, it might not be visible in this image, but just try it home. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. How do oh, you know yeah. everyone's at home? Some people are at work. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm now try in... Try this at work. Well, now I'm in America, so every time zone is, should be American time zone. Okay, it's mm. not America. <laughs> if you're going to live here, you're going to have to call America. it what we call it. America. All right. And you got to remember... We have multiple time zones here. We have multiple time zones. Oh, my God. All right. So, um, wait a minute. We have stuff to give away today. Oh, wow. Eric, to me? tell us what our fabulous, fabulous oh, yeah, prizes. Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk about these, right? No, but we got prizes. Right, and we're going to so pick some winners right now. We're going to give away a Platypod Max. Now, you saw the Platypod ad just a little bit earlier. Tomorrow, I believe, they will be at Photo Plus. Is oh, yeah. Platypod there? Oh, yeah. Make sure you stop by their booth and get a, a, get a actual live demo. But... Don't take a tripod, take a platypod, you will love it. And we're also going to give them away the la landscape photography That's book. That's my landscape photography book. And uh -oh, what? a cool new book on Photoshop Elements. If you were an Elements user, I finally updated my yeah. book. Hey, I worked on that photo. Did, yeah, you did. Yeah. You absolutely did. That was a cover of something important. 
yeah. my Photoshop for Lightroom users book. But this, uh, so there's like a Victor retouch. I send my stuff out now to someone better. But um, <laughs> anyway, they're in Nepal. Ouch. Nepal. Or, no, they're in uh, St. Paul. Anyway, we're going to give away, a, it's not even on press yet. Well, it's at the yeah. publisher. It'll be on press any day. You're going to get one of the first Photoshop copies that Elements come in. 2020. I'll be happy to sign and it you for guys, you in the whole nine brand, yards. Brand new stuff in there. You know, speaking of the colorized, there was an interesting feature in the new Photoshop Elements, right? There is an amazingly, Amazing amazingly. In, do I still, let me see if I have it on or I can show you, because this will blow your mind. It's I mean, it's almost like one of those things where you're like, why, why is isn't that, that not in, in, in Photoshop? Because it belongs in Photoshop. Hmm. <laughs> it's in Elements, but why is this not in Photoshop? Oh, rats, I don't have it here. Do I not have it here? But it is awesome. It's on my machine at home. Awesome. It is ridiculous. So what it For does, colorizing photos. you take an old black and white photo, yep. it analyzes the photo and colorizes it for you. But what's amazing is how often it gets it right. Like you just click the button and you look and you're like, I mean, it recognized that your jeans should be blue and your shirt should be the, and your skin tone. It's, it's I mean, it was crazy. Crazily accurate. Oh, OK. And, and then you could then you could take manual control over it. Yeah. Afterwards. Now, if you wanted to tweak it, yeah. yeah. Let me just look for one second because I might have a sample picture to show you. It was you. one of those things when I saw it where I was like, "Why is this not in Photoshop? Why is it not in Photoshop? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Any sense? Zero sense. Well, I thought Elements Zero. was like a dumber version of Photoshop. It's not. It's a harder pain in the butt version. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm going to show you. I'll at least show you this. This is not the best one. But I'm going to show you. So this is a picture of, there you go. oh, I did this manually. This right. is a picture of my mom and dad, handsome couple. And then you, uh, but I showed how to do it manually. That's not it. Give me one second. You find us the winners, Eric, and I'll, yes. find, the, I'll find the right so image. Because that's, I winners, did that manually. Speaking of winners, we got uh, Diane Arnold has won the landscape photography book, yeah. right? And then the platypod is, uh, Nina has won the platypod. And then Cheryl, you've won the Elements book. Nice. Which Scott's going to show you a cool thing from All right, the Elements book. All right, here we book. go. So take a look. This is a There's shot a cool of guy. a cool, cool guy. Check out that skinny tie. Woo! <laughs> anyway, this was from a band promo photo. So we did shots of the band, and then we did like this promo photo. And so it doesn't know this was taken back in the 80s. That looks like the 80s, I was going to say. Thank yeah. you. I was in ridiculously cool. Yes. All right, now. I'm going to show you, all I did was click the colorize button. So that's it. Just, I didn't do anything yeah, else. No manual adjustments. No just manual colorize, just to open button. it and I click the button. Oh, crud. And then it shut it <laughs> How's down. How's that for, uh, hang on, everybody. Like, don't move, bum, don't breathe. Bum, bum, bum. It'll I be hit. awesome once it works. Sure it will be. All right, I can even do better than that. Let's yeah. see. Here Boom. we go. There, there was the, uh, let me hide this other stuff. There was the, oh, goodness gracious. Oh, it's going downhill. Yeah, it's really gotten it's, bad. I'm it's sorry. Going downhill. All right, can you see that shot? Yes. That's what you choose. Colorized, Colorized photo, photo and then boom. Boom. Look at that. I'll just open it with Photoshop so you can see. Look. That's the that's the default coloration. For non no it made the it made the grass green, made my hair brown. It, I mean it it that's just the default. Now, I remember that tie and I will tell you quite honestly, the tie was like a purpley red. But it gives you other variations that you could choose if you go, well, that's, that's the default. But it's just automatic. That but ain't bad for automatic. Go, then you, you can go and override that. See the little thing up top that says manual? Yeah. You can click over to the manual button and then do it yourself. And I showed how to do it from scratch. So what it does is, like, if you go to the skin tone, you take this little dropper tool, you put it on the skin tone, and that tells it this is skin. And then it goes, here's all these pigments of skin. Which yep. one is the closest to, to what your mom was? And you go like that. That's crazy. Know? It's really an amazingly good for, you know, just a built-in one-click thing. Mm -hmm. well, that's impressive. And this is basically the future. That's what's going to happen. Yep. Like, yep. For example, like uh, changing like limbs or faces and stuff, you can do that with, with the help of AI. And they could just analyze oh, yeah. the photo and just do that. So a couple of things that people do and have, you know, done uh, with retouchers is going to just go away. And uh, other like software packages will, will get those things done. So it's going to be more like about the creative process. And this is Absolutely. why why Victor is practicing to be a sniper, because that is a growing field, right? 
like um, military yeah. sniper. Remember there was a movie? Uh, there was a there were a couple of movies. See? In the world. Yeah. A couple of movies. Well, folks, I think we've right. gone as far as we can take this bad boy. <laughs> Victor, today you were fascinating, informative, sassy, classy, and you were a lassie. There That's he is on Instagram. That. I love it when you move real fast like that. That's the That's photo my favorite. from uh, Forbes magazine. You were in Forbes? Yeah. Jeez. Unfortunate facts of life. No, Forbes is a very no, respected Forbes, magazine. Yeah, Forbes is nice. And look, the digital surgeon's giving you a so cool. Oh. Nice. There you so go. So cool. So cool. Well, everybody, thanks for watching. Victor, thank you very much for sharing some of your techniques and, yeah. and your witticisms oh. and your insightful-isms. <laughs> Eric, thanks for just being you. You're welcome. Because that's enough. <laughs> just being you is enough. Yeah. That jib's going to start moving at any no, minute. No, it's not. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Thanks to our crew here. And uh, we will catch you guys Told next you. Wednesday. Ho Told hopefully you. we'll see uh, some of you tomorrow tomorrow at Photo Plus. Yeah, Photo Plus. You see me and Eric. Stop us and go. Yeah. <laughs> New York City. That's what people do. Yep. New York City. New York City. Is that how that jib should move? That's it's look, yeah. just yeah, okay. new. Yeah, it's just new guy. Yeah, okay. well, uh, it's that's I don't know. Awkward. It's, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, and it's like a slow launch. <sighs>